Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God, love from the beginning, word made flesh, breath of heaven. Amen. Gathered together this morning, let us confess our sinfulness before God and before one another, trusting together in God's endless mercy and love. Merciful God, we confess that we are not perfect. We have said and we have done things that we regret. We have tried to earn your redeeming grace while denying it to other people. We have resisted your call to be your voice in this crazy world. We ask that you would forgive us, loving God. We ask that you would give us your righteousness and give us the strength to put aside our failures and that you would provide the courage to try again. Amen. People of God, hear the good news. Jesus Christ, the Savior, is born. You are loved and you are forgiven in the name of Jesus, who has come among us. You are freed from proving that you deserve to be loved because God's love is given to you as the most precious gift of all. Rejoice in this love and share it with the world. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord of glory, for the example of Stephen, the first martyr, who looked to heaven and prayed for his persecutors. Grant that we also may pray for our enemies and seek forgiveness for those who hurt us. We ask all of this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, who lives and who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the sixth and seventh chapters of the book of Acts. Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. When some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and others of those from Cilicia and Asia stood up and argued with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. 
Then they secretly instigated some men to say, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people as well as the elders and the scribes. Then they suddenly confronted him, seized him, and brought him before the council. They set up false witnesses who said, This man never stops saying things against this holy place in the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses handed on to us. And all who sat in the council looked intently at him. And they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Then the high priest asked him, Are these things so? And Stephen replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to do. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one. And now you have become his betrayers and murderers. You are the ones that received the law as ordained by angels, and yet you have not kept it. When they heard these things, they became enraged and ground their teeth at Stephen. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. So there is a very good chance that you know a person with this name. It is the 53rd most popular name in the entire United States. There are just over 900,000 people with this name. There's a chance that you know somebody that has this name. S-T-E-P-H-E-N. Stephen. Do you know anybody named Stephen? I'm willing to bet that you do. I'm willing to bet that you can think of him. Maybe you're just thinking of uh, somebody who's well known because there are all sorts of, uh, besides the Stevens we know, well known Stevens. Can you think of any of these? Stephen Hawking, uh, the physicist who wrote all sorts of stuff that I'm sure went way above my head. There's Stephen King, who, again, writes a lot. I don't even know how he finds the time to write the amount of stuff that he writes. And I don't even know where he dreams up uh, the horror of it. Uh, so Stephen Hawking writes stuff, and it's really intelligent. Stephen King is also very intelligent. But where does he get up, come up with this stuff? Uh, and then, uh, let's see, there's also Stephen Curry, S-T-E-P-H-E-N. Yes, it's pronounced differently, but it's spelled the same, would you think of him? As a Cavs fan, he has made us cry and whine plenty, which incidentally, uh, he, Stephen Curry, was born in Summit County, Ohio. He was born in Akron. So we have a sort of link to him, uh, whether we're Cavs fans or whatever. Uh, Stephen, do you know anybody with the name Stephen? There's Stephen Port, who was a serial killer. There's Dr. 
Stephen Strange, Dr. Strange. There is Stephen F. Austin. There are all sorts of popes and cardinals. Can you think of anybody named S-T-E-P-H-E-N? Can you picture them? Are you considering that this is a banner over all of our collective heads? Stephen, it is a title for who you and I are. Is it possible that Stephen, the name and the identity is written in our corporate DNA? And is it possible that this name calls us through the Holy Spirit to be and to do something? Think about it. Do you know any Stevens? Is it making you think of Saint Stephen for me to say this name, Stephen? Today is Sunday, December 27th of 2020, and on this day, Stephen is in my mind because December 26th every year, the day after Christmas, is not just Boxing Day, but it is also the day that the church commemorates Saint Stephen, the person for whom our church is named. Stephen, whoever we're thinking of, however it's pressed on our minds, is part of who we are. Do you know the story or the identity of Stephen, Saint Stephen, the person under whose banner we gather? And I'm not just talking about Stephen Hawking or Stephen King, I'm talking about Saint Stephen. Did you know that when the call goes out, and even though we're dispersed all over the place, and we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we're still called into one, and that a banner over our heads says Stephen, and it makes us in part who we are, and that today is a day to think about what this means for us and what our DNA is. There's four things I would like to tell you about Stephen, and I'd like to think about what this means for you and I, the people of St. Stephen, who gather under a banner with the name Stephen on it. When I said, do you know anybody with the name Stephen, you might not have been able to think of somebody. I'm willing to bet you did. You probably thought of your church. I doubt you thought of yourself. But today, we are all Stephens. And there are four things about Stephen, the original biblical Stephen, that I want to think about. First of all, Stephen, the biblical Stephen, whose story appears in the sixth and seventh chapter of the book of Acts. Acts is the fifth book of the New Testament. And Stephen, the person for whom our community is named, is uh, a person whose story is told in the sixth and seventh chapter of Acts. And there's a few things that I'd like to tell you about him because I believe that this is a bit of the call of who you and I are. The first thing, Stephen is a Hellenist. Stephen's name is not really Jewish, it's Greek, and we can tell by the way that he speaks and the way that he interacts that he's not Jewish. He's a Hellenist, it's a fancy way of saying that he's Greek, he comes from the outside of the Jewish tradition. And this is significant. It's significant for you and I because Christianity, faith, just like Judaism, has a lot of tradition and a lot of time spent on how that tradition should play out or what it should look like. But Stephen comes from outside of it in. And in my opinion, and you can see this in the 6th and 7th chapters of Acts, Stephen's presence there isn't because of circumcision or the diet that Jewish folks eat or whether early Christians should eat it too or the debate that they were all about. His presence there is because he knew that it was a call by the Holy Spirit and because when he gathered there, he felt 
something. I think Stephen, for whom we rest under a banner, is more about how it feels and more about the experience than he is about necessarily uh, making sure all the tradition is the thing that defines us. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying, hey, let's throw out all the tradition. I'm talking about Stephen. I'm talking about the Bible. I'm saying we wear this banner. I'm saying this is a day that we celebrate in the church here. All of this has to do with tradition. But I am saying that that isn't the totality of who we are and that that isn't where we should be stuck, which is a good thing to hear in 2020 when all of our traditions have gone out the window. The experience, the power of being called by the Holy Spirit, the community, who we are and where we love and connect with each other should be our guiding thing. And this is what it means for our name to be Stephen. That's one thing. The second thing, you can see this in the sixth and seventh chapters of the story of Acts. Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, Stephen, whose name is our name too was a deacon in the church. A deacon is a person who is actively involved and who even takes a leadership uh, or, or an active role when their gifts seem to fit that role. I think this is important, and I think it's important that we bear the name Stephen because I think we can think about this like this too. That for better or worse, Stephen, you and I, the people of St. Stephen, are not called to be passive consumers who show up one day a week or occasionally or who tune into a video every now and then and who uh, are defined completely by that. I think we bear this name. And I think in bearing this name, we are being called, it is written in our DNA, the Spirit guides us to be a people who actively participate with each other and who actively live out our faith. This is not to say that it saves us, it's mostly to say that this is the way that we come to know and be faith. It's an experience and we want to live in it. Stephen, the original Stephen uh, of the book of Acts, cares for the poor and for widows. He waits tables. It's all about what he can actively do. It's an experience and he's not just stuck on tradition, He's also participating. He hasn't just come and shown up and have that be what he does and then go home. It's something that has become a way of life for him. The third thing about Stephen, this name, the name that you bear and that I bear, is that in the seventh chapter of Acts, we are given in Stephen's name a speech. It is a speech that in all of the Bible is the longest about what it means to be Christian. This is the longest deliberate point blank speech about what it means to be a Christ follower in the whole Bible. And it's given by Stephen, a man who came from maybe a place a little bit outside, who's now on the inside and who is speaking to all of his fellow uh, congregants, uh, people in his church. He's also speaking to priests and people who know the tradition, and he is showing them the value of proclaiming and the value of teaching and of connecting. He's explaining the value of Christian education, which again, I think, is a call that you and I have as this becomes our name that we aren't just passive, but we understand that this is a thing that we're participatory in and that we're involved in, and that the, one of the ways that we're involved is in teaching, whether it be maybe of kids, maybe it's just of adults or others, but it's still about teaching. Our habit, when we slip into our names, like John or our names, and away from the name Stephen that we're bearing, is to be like, ah, oh, no, we can't teach. We, we don't know enough. We're not smart enough. But that's why I really value this story. In the seventh chapter of Acts, there is a speech that Stephen actually gave. We know that he gave it because it is chock full of mistakes. 
if he wouldn't have given it, if it would have been doctored or, or fixed, maybe we could say, oh, someone else put this in his mouth, but he said it, and he's an outsider, and he might not necessarily have everything straight and everything right, but that doesn't stop him from proclaiming and teaching anyway. Can you hear me saying that this is in our DNA? His speech is filled with errors. I could go on and on about these errors, but I'll give a few examples. He speaks of Abraham. Stephen speaks of Abraham in Acts chapter 7. And he says that the call came to him to be a person of faith in a place called Ur. You are. The Bible tells us that the story actually came to Abraham. The call actually came to Abraham in Haran. Stephen doesn't have all the facts all the way right. He gets Terah's age wrong. He says Moses' age when the Bible never really tells it. It's just chalk filled of all sorts of historical mistakes. Maybe that's because our lives and our faith aren't about being perfect or being able to explain it perfectly. They're not even about, per se, all the head knowledge and how smart we are. It's about the experience. And it's about the idea that the Spirit calls us and claims us and names us and puts us in this place to be actively and pro proactively part of a call together. And that this call comes through the Holy Spirit to you and I under a banner, and it's a banner that has a name on it, and it's a name that we bear, and the name is Stephen. The fourth thing about Stephen is that he is the church's first martyr. In his call in Christ, he is the first person in the Bible to follow Christ all the way to where Christ's call seems to lead, and it's a scary place. It's a tomb. It's a place where we die to ourselves. We die to whether we're a Hellenist or a Jew. We die to just how participatory we can be. We die to whether we have all the facts right. And we go to the tomb aware of the call that we had, aware that it came from the Holy Spirit and that it calls us to be active and participatory. We go fully aware that teaching is so important and is part of who we are. And we enter a tomb, a place uh, that takes away uh, all of the stuff we bring and leaves us broken and alone, and a place that leaves us only able to cry out for the God of Stephen and of all of our ancestors. And this is a God who meets us in the tomb and promises us that this is not the place where we stay. Whatever state our Christian ad is in doesn't mean that it can't be raised again. And it can be through us. It can be our participation and our action that helps bring about God's kingdom, like the burgeoning kingdom in the book of Acts, uh, through us in the very world that we live in. For you see, Stephen is a name that we bear. I asked you to think about it. Can you think of anybody named Stephen? S-T-E-P-H-E-N. Did you think of somebody famous? Did you think of somebody who lives down the street? Did you think of your church? Did you think of yourself? God's Spirit has gathered us under this banner, and our name is Stephen. And this has made us not outsiders any longer, but people gathered together to actively share who we are in Christ. And to share that in a way that teaches and in a way that follows Jesus all the way to the tomb. Because together, Stephen, you and I, we are God's people. And together in this tomb with whatever it is we have, God's Spirit promises to not leave us here, but to bring about resurrection. Because this is really the banner that we wave. That ours is a name, it's Stephen, but ours is also a call, and this is who you and I are. May we, on this day after St. Stephen Day and every day, live into it by the Spirit, 
and may we know resurrection as God's community of people. Amen. You grace us with life and breath and give us bread for our journey. We ask that your banner would indeed wave over us and that your Holy Spirit would reign in our hearts. Remind us that we are Stephen. We are Saint Stephen. And we ask that you would send us out in service to this world, a world that you love and that you would help us to tell the amazing news of your coming to be Savior and Lord of all. And we ask that you would guide us to say these things in a world that so desperately needs a break and needs to hear it. Amen. People of God, serve with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Thanks be to God. Stay safe. Go in peace. See you soon.